Hello friends, welcome. Today in this class we will talk about the concept of the national income. Okay. Here in which we will talk about the gross domestic product that is a GDP, net domestic product that is a NDP, real and nominal GDP and GDP and welfare. Okay. So now let's start with the lecture. Here first we will talk about the GDP. The GDP stands for the gross domestic product. Okay. Then what is the meaning of the GDP? Now GDP is the aggregate, it is the total monetary value. That is the GDP measured in terms of the money. money. So you can say that it is the aggregate monetary value of all final goods and services. Here we are taking the final goods because it involves all the inter it involves the value of all the intermediate goods and to avoid the double counting we are considering the value of the final goods. Okay. So aggregate monetary value of all final goods and services that are produced within a border of country that is within a domestic area. Okay. So that is known as the GDP, gross domestic product. Okay. Here, uh, it is said that the goods and services produced within a border of a country. Therefore, it includes all the income arises within a border of a country. So, it excludes the income, that is a net income factor. from abroad. It do not include the net foreign investment. Okay. So this is GDP. We can define GDP as so GDP is equal to C that is C is equal to the consumption goods produced in a current year. Okay. So, it, uh, when we all, all these, then we get the GDP, that is the C first, then the second one is the I. I is the gross investment or we can say that the capital goods consumption, okay. The capital goods like the machinery, building, all are included in the GDP. So, we also can say that it is the gross investment, okay. The next one is the government expenditure. Government also provides services to the community and that is the expenditure for that. So it is also included in the GDP and the last one is the net export. Okay. Net export here is it is the difference between the total export minus total import which gives us the net import. Okay, the net export. So when we add all these, that is the consumption good, gross investment or the capital goods, government expenditure, and the net exports, we got GDP. Okay, so in this way we are getting the GDP. It is measured at market value. Okay, and it is uh, it helpful to measure the wealth of the economy, health of the economy. Okay. Now let's talk about the NDP. NDP means the net domestic product. Okay. NDP stands for the net domestic product. Here, 
the machinery building or uh, whatever the capital goods we are using in a production process it has the certain period of useful life okay the machinery example machinery or the building okay it has the useful life and whenever it will over it is useless okay so the all the machinery building has the wear and tear okay in the process of production so it is called the depreciation that should deduct from the gdp to get ndp that is a net domestic product so the ndp is equal to the gdp that is the gross domestic product minus depreciation when we deduct depreciation from the gdp we get we got ndp okay so this is about the ndp okay here we have talk about the gdp and ndp concept okay a gdp is used to compare the growth of the economy okay and when we are considering gdp to compare the growth okay we here there is a implicit assumption that there is a implicit assumption over here is that the price do not changes okay here if the prices changes then it may have difficulty to compare the gdp and therefore we are assuming that the price is not changing over here okay for example the gdp we are comparing the comparing the gdp of the two years okay we are comparing the gdp of two years okay and if gdp become double let's say here we have the x and in the second year we have the 2x gdp okay so gdp is double over here okay so we say that the production is double okay production is double but it may be possible that the price is double and not the production okay so it it means lead to us and therefore to compare gdp we need to take the help of the real gdp so here there is a concept called the real gdp and the nominal gdp let's first understand what is the real gdp here in the real gdp we have the constant set of prices that means the price is fixed price remain fixed in the uh, in the real gdp okay and as the price remain fixed if the gdp increases okay we sure we surely say that the production is increasing is increased okay if the price remains uh, fixed and then also the production uh, then also the gdp is increasing then we can say that we surely can say that the production is increasing and not the price okay so this is called the real gdp concept here the price remain fixed we have the constant set of price okay so the next one is the nominal gdp here in the nominal gdp we are considering the prevailing prices current prevailing prices 
Okay. So here let's understand these with the help of the example that is the real GDP and nominal GDP. Okay. Here uh, we have let's say there is a firm, let's say egg X firm. Okay, produces Y goods. They are producing only Y goods. Okay, and the price of it, let's say for the year 2013. Okay, the price of the Y good is rupees 10. Okay, and they are producing 100 units. Okay, they are producing 100 units. So the GDP becomes 1000, that is the 10 into 100, okay. So the GDP over here we have is the 1000 rupees. Let's say in 2014, the price is increased by 15 and the production, the price is increased by 15 and the production is become 110. So, here we have the GDP of 1650 rupees, okay. It is, here we are considering the increasing price, so that is, it is the nominal GDP. Okay, we are considering the prevailing price, so here we can say that it is the nominal GDP. But in the earlier case, we have the price of 10 rupees and the production of 110. That is the increased production. Okay. So the GDP, according to the real GDP, it will be 1100. Uh, okay. So it is our real GDP. Okay. Got the concept of real GDP and nominal GDP? Okay. So here, Next is the GDP and the welfare. Can we measure GDP as a welfare index of the people? Okay. Can we measure it or not? Here let's say if the GDP is in, if the income of a person is rises, okay, then they are buying more goods and services. If the income is rises, they are, then they bought more goods and services and there is the well-being of themselves. So we can say that and here if the goods and services are rises, then the GDP is also rises. Okay. And overall well-being of the people is also possible. So we can measure GDP as a welfare index. But in, there are some reasons. Uh, through which we can say that GDP can't be the measure of the welfare. Let's, uh, let's talk about it. The first one is the distribution of the GDP. Okay, it is the distribution of GDP. How uniform it is. Okay. Here, if the GDP is rises, okay, but it is distributed in few hands only. Okay. If the GDP is distributed in the few hands and the income of the few people is increasing and the other people's in, uh, income may fall, then it can't be the measure of the welfare. It may mislead to us. So, the, if the distribution of GDP is uniform, then it can be the welfare me, uh, measure. But generally, the distribution is in the few hands only and therefore it misleads to uh, us. Okay. Now, the second reason is the non-monetary exchanges. Here, non-monetary exchanges does not involve the money in this. Okay. For example, the activity like the woman 
activity of the woman at their home they are performing various activities okay so that is not uh, that doesn't involve any money that doesn't count money okay the another activity like the barter system here in this case the goods are exchanged and there is no involvement of money in this okay so it is not recorded in the books and it is not involved in the gdp okay so here there is the underestimation of the gdp therefore also we can say that it is not the measure of the welfare okay and the another reason is the externalities externalities are the benefits maybe the benefits or maybe the harms a firm or an individual do to the others okay and they are not punished for that they are not penalized for that okay any harm if the one person does to the other and they are not punished or penalized for that then it is called externalities okay for example there is a businessman okay producing uh, it has the oil refinery let's say there is a uh, It, he has a business of the oil refinery okay uh, they are doing the production of the oil refinery and all okay but the water that is the chemical water they are spreading it into the river near river okay and it harms fishes which lives in the river okay and the income of fishermen affected okay negatively affected but the businessmen do not penalize for it okay businessmen do not penalize for harming the fishermen's income okay so there are certain externalities and here we are overestimating the gdp so there are certain kinds of the externalities which underestimate or overestimate the gdp of the economy and therefore we can't blindly take the gdp as a welfare of the economy okay so this is all about the gdp and the aggregates like the ndp gdp in real and the nominal gdp and the gdp at the uh, their welfare okay i hope you understand it well in the next class we will talk about the personal income private income national disposable income etc so stay tuned for that thank you